Let me just say one thing, very important. As an African American, that means that when I was five years old, my grandmother dropped it on me that her sister had been a slave and was 10 years old when slavery, when the, um, when slavery was abolished. My grandmother was uh, born three years after the abolition of slavery. That's on my father's side. On my mother's side, my mother's grandfather was an abolitionist and worked with Frederick Douglass and fought against slavery. So the fact that I've been involved in the struggle for equality and justice for people of African descent, former slaves in this country, is just a part of who I am. There's no other, there's no other direction I believe that my life could take uh, with that knowledge and with that understanding. The other thing is, in my family, um, we, there was always discussion about what was happening with African American people. And uh, my growing up in the 50s and 60s allowed me to have a real good sense of what was, what was happening. We, we read every African American uh, newspaper in our family. We read the Pittsburgh Courier. The, uh, the Amsterdam News, the uh, Philadelphia Independent, uh, the Crisis Magazine, the Crusader Magazine, Jet Magazine, Ebony Magazine, all that. 1,000 lynchings was the thing that really got to me when I was a kid. Um, the, the mem there were members of my family that were all kinds, involved in all kinds of activities, some of which uh, I believe my, my dad was um, a card-carrying member of the CPUSA. He was also a carpenter and a laborer. Um, when I was in high school, that is from 1960 to 1964, I went to a high school that was 60% white and 40% African American, had just recently been integrated. There was no such thing as a black cheerleader. So, you know, I was uh, very smart. Uh, I was a I graduated number 13 out of a class of 638 students. There was no chance, I was, uh, you know, a very popular. There was no chance for me to be a cheerleader or any of that kind of stuff. So then, upon graduation, when everybody, you know, the question of where are you going to college, um, as a black kid from a working class background without money, there was no such thing as going to college. I got me a job as a waitress. And in the process, I was, my family was encouraging me to get a good job, which was not available to me. A good job in the telephone company or the quartermasters, et cetera, et cetera, was not available to me because they were not hiring black girls for that. You could not get a job doing that. So what we're talking about here is the fact that the inequality in the society either diminishes your your desire to to make changes in your own life and in society or it encourages you to fight for equality because of my background and my family life i think the question of whether or not i was going to fight for equality and justice for black people was a moot question I had to just in order to be to become who I needed to be and to, to have my own equality recognized in society. Let me just tell you something about how this works. Um, what happens is that either you stand up for yourself and you, you stand up for what is right in the world or you don't. And that is where the militancy issue comes in. Um, the question of the need for decent housing for everyone is a question of right or wrong. The question of that everybody needs to have health care is a basic question of right, just from my point of view, it's a question of right or wrong. The question of treating people, all human beings, as human beings and recognizing that anything that you have is necessary and is, the, is if it's your right to have it, it's the right of every other human being to have that thing, whatever it is. Uh, whether that's the freedom to travel, that whether it's the, the, the ability to have a decent education, all of the things that, the, the ability to have a, a, you know, a, a decent life, a basic, and to be able to take care of your family. If that is your right, if you believe that it's okay for you to have it, 
then it's okay for me to have it. And it's your right and it's your responsibility to fight for it for me and everybody else. And if you're not, then there's something wrong with you. So that's, that's a bottom line kind of question about you know, just what it is that we're doing about militancy, about economic um, injustice, economic inequality. We have economic inequality in this country because there was slavery in this country. And because they did not believe the people of African descent who were formerly slaves had the right to live the same way that people who were our slave masters had the right to live. Let's get real about what this is really about. Okay? Now, then you come back and you say, wait a second, I'm just as good as you are. I'm just as equal as you are. I deserve, along with all of my people, everything that you have. Then I'm a, I'm a bad guy. Then it's, I'm a terrible person for fighting for something that is so much the essence of what every human being desires and, and, and should have. So my question to you and to the rest of the society is what the hell is wrong with your brains? It's not my brain, that's the problem. It's not my desire to have equality, that's the problem. It's not my, my desire to, to, have to know, to recognize uh, that equality in every element of life is the essence of making a good, decent society. Recognizing the contributions, because that's the other piece. As slaves and as former slaves, African Americans made tremendous contributions to this society, which never get recognized, and which still are not recognized, and which we've been through a struggle for 40 years, which I have been personally involved in a struggle for 40 years, and there still has not been a recognition of all the contributions that African Americans have made. And in fact, the essence of our society is set up to suppress all of that information and to suppress people like me from saying this to you. Because, the, and, and how it's done is through fear. Is that most black people will not tell you what they're thinking and are not gonna tell you that the left is racist, okay? That there's no equality in the left and that I'm the last person to speak here as opposed to the first or the second. <laughs> Nobody's going to put that out there to you without, uh, you know, having some sense of um, that it's okay to do that because people are either going to get angry at you, they're going to try to stop you from speaking, and they will use it. It's institutionalized to to the degree that at this point our young people have no sense that it's possible or necessary to do that, to call people out on a daily basis, and the other thing is. The fear element is that when you do that on your job, you can get fired. But the people who get fired on their jobs for standing up for themselves are usually people of African descent or people of color. Okay, and we and we also know that. And there are people that are around that are willing to stand up and say, "Wait a second, you didn't give the person the same justice, the same equality, the same element of of." Uh, a sense of, of being themselves or their, their humanity that you would have given anybody else. Because then you're afraid. Then you then you become the nigger lover, as what it was called in the 60s. And the 50s, that's what it was called. Um, so the, the, other, the other piece to this is that um, this, there's some basic things that if, if you actually struggle for them, for me, you would gain them yourself. Because that's that's the other element to this thing is that when you struggle for equality, like major issue that's going on now is healthcare. Healthcare is a right for every human being. If you believe what's in the Constitution, which I was I was taught that the Constitution had some, some basis in reality, which I learned uh, pretty quickly when I decided that I was going to a challenge what was in the Constitution of this country, uh, that you have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So that means that you have the right to health care, free, quality health care, to me. And if it doesn't mean that to you, I don't know, you know, what's going on in your head.